Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going thrift shopping for some furniture to paint. So I'm gonna show you my process when I go hunting for furniture and give you some tips and tricks along the way as well. So if you wanna come thrifting with me, just keep watching. So today I'm gonna take you thrifting for furniture and show you what I'm looking for when I'm shopping. I get a lot of questions about what do I look for? How do I know something's real wood? How do I know that it's good quality? What is a good price? So I'm gonna try to show you the process that I go through when I'm looking for furniture, when I'm shopping for furniture. My first stop today is a thrift store called Graceworks. It's actually a whole ministry and they run a thrift shop and a furniture shop to bring in funds for everything that they do. And they actually have a food pantry on site here that people can come to and get food. So I love shopping here because I know that my money is going to a good cause. I'm gonna take you, walk you around and let's see if we can find anything good to paint. So I did look up more of what Graceworks does when I went home and they actually provide food and clothing and shelter for people who are in need in the county that I live in. As I am shopping today, I am going to share my five furniture hunting tips for success. And with this table right here, I want to talk to you about the touch test. With this one, I'm looking at it. I know that it's oak. I think that it's solid wood, but to make sure that it's real, I'm just rubbing my hand over it and I can actually feel the grain. At the very least, this has a real wood veneer on here. So I could strip this back or sand this and make it a different color. And oak tables are always really good to refinish, but this one already sold. So I just moved on to the next thing. So now I'm hopping over to this dresser to show you the feel test in action again. So when I ran my hand over this one, I couldn't feel that variation in the wood. I didn't feel the grain. So I could tell that this is a laminate sticker probably on top of MDF or something. So tip number two is to look for good constructed pieces. And here's a little tip with drawers. I tend to not get ones that look like this where the joint is kind of separating might be just like stapled on there. A good thing to look for is a dovetail drawer. You know that that is a really solid joint and good construction. This isn't a hard fast rule and there are a lots of different joints that you can do besides dovetail. It's just like the easiest one to spot that I know is good construction. Like these end tables here did not have dovetailing on the drawers maybe because it's just a end table and you're not gonna be using it as much as you would like a dresser, like an everyday type of drawer thing. So by feeling these and using some of my other tests for furniture, I still would consider buying these even though they don't have dovetail drawers. So you kinda just have to take everything into account when you're looking at a piece. I am showing this chair to you to share tip number three with you, which is start small. This is a $10 piece in pretty good condition with a solid wood seat that would be great for stripping or trying to stain or do stain over an existing finish before you tackle a table. And you could try your hand at painting the rest of the chair to see how you like furniture paint. I wanted to throw this little shiny table in here to show you something that I definitely try to avoid, which is really, really glossy tops like this. No matter how much I like the piece, it's just gonna be some extra work. You're gonna have to sand or degloss or strip or add a primer to this to do anything to it. Well, that was unsuccessful. I didn't find anything I was really looking for today, but I did find a Michigan State football. <laughs> Okay, stop number two, I am outside of my local ReStore. If you don't have a ReStore near you, if you've never heard of it, they actually support Habitat for Humanity. I find the prices here are a little bit higher than a typical thrift store, but I don't mind paying extra when I know that my money is going to help a nonprofit. It's just like getting a donation, but getting something in return. What have I bought in here before? I've only bought like a pair of shutters in here before that I turned into decor for my house. Let's go in there and see what we can find today. There are over 900 Restore locations across the country, so you might be able to find one near you. Right when I walked in, these were the first two pieces that I saw, and I wanted to check them out because they looked old and interesting and antique. But unfortunately, they were priced at antique prices. So this little secretary desk was $350, and then this little chest over here was $250. Really gorgeous. I don't even think I would refinish these in any way, but they're just out of my price range today. This piece is like a jackpot to me. It was priced at $60, which is really good for an old antique piece like this. It's unique. It would look beautiful painted any color. 
Um, I really, really loved this and it had dovetail drawers, which is a super big plus. And this is an excellent piece to show you tip number four, check your piece for labels and indications of what it's made of and who it was made by. Here, this one actually said that it was made of solid maple. I've never seen that before. A lot of times you do see like the stamp of a company or where it was made or when it was made. Some other places you can look are underneath it. Um, in the drawers, sometime it has a stamp of a company, um, but I always just Google whatever is on there and see what I can find out about the piece. My next find in the restore was this high boy dresser. I have made one of these over in the past and I absolutely loved it. And I was really, really tempted to buy this because it was $80, which is, you know, a pretty good price if I'm keeping it for me. If I'm looking to sell it, I kind of really want to get this for more like $50 or $40 just to be able to make a profit. But this is still a really good price. And this one was well constructed. It had dovetail drawers. I couldn't get underneath it or behind it to see which company made it. If I had a space for this in my house or room in my garage, this would have come home with me today. Oh my goodness, that secretary and that high boy were beautiful and they were actually really good prices um, for what they were, but I have so much stuff in my garage right now. I just can't bring something that big home. I've got one more store I want to take you guys to, so let's go. So I was chatting with a gentleman at the last store I was at about those two pieces I showed you guys and he kind of asked me like, oh, are you into antiques? And I said, well, yeah, I refinish stuff. I paint it or I stain it and, you know, I help, I help it like fit in modern homes. And he kind of looked at me like, don't buy these. <laughs> which didn't stop me or deter me, but it's just funny how polarizing painting furniture can be. So sometimes don't tell people what you're doing. <laughs> this is one of my local thrift stores. I saw some furniture in the window. I've never been in here before, so I wanted to check it out, but it actually turned out to be a complete bust. <laughs> it was mostly clothes and toys and stuff like this. This was actually the only furniture that they had in there. So I decided I wanted to take you one more place. An old favorite of mine is Goodwill. In fact, this is where I found my first piece that I ever painted. And it's one of my favorites. And I know a lot of people do have Goodwill near them. So I'm gonna take you into my local Goodwill and we'll see what we can find. Hands down, I think Goodwill has the best deals on furniture but that is the same reason why you don't find a lot of furniture in here because it just flies out of the store if it's in good shape. So this is a place I like to come once a week. But it is a great place to find those starting small projects like this little bookshelf here would be great to test out some stain or some paint on and just get your feet wet for $8, great deal. And if you end up not liking what you did, you could just bring it right back like this person did. It looks like somebody tried to paint this um, and it didn't turn out too well. It looks like they didn't seal it. Um, this is a cute table and I it reminds me of my one that I redid for my beginner's finish, but at this point you'd have to strip all this paint off, so I don't think it's worth buying it for 20 bucks today. Well, I'm ending my thrifting shopping trip with nothing in my trunk, which is really sad, but it brings me to my last point. Don't give up if you don't find what you're looking for on your first trek to the thrift store. Things are coming in and changing daily in these stores, and you never know when you're gonna find something that really, really fits you, that you get excited about, and that's priced right for you. I had two pieces that I really, really love today, but I don't have a spot for them in my house, and I don't have a spot for them in my garage to paint and sell right now, so I just had to say no to them, even though I really would have loved to bring them home. So even though I did not find anything today, I had a lot of fun shopping with you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing what goes on in my brain when I'm looking for pieces. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will be back with another project and video next week. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have your notifications turned on. <laughs> Thanks again, you guys, for being here, and I will see you next time.